Hello everyone. In this video, I will demonstrate a couple of concepts. Uh, first one, we're gonna talk about formative measures. So we're gonna bring in one more construct called stress, which is major formatively. Uh, we have already seen the reflectively major constructs here. Uh, so that's one thing. And second thing, we're gonna use another uh, construct, again, the stress as the moderator. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll see that whether the stress moderates the relationship between satisfaction and retention and commitment and retention. So that's something we have to uh, look into. Now, first thing first, uh, you know, moderator. What are moderators? Uh, moderators are the constructs that can uh, change uh, existing expected relationship between the two other constructs. For example, we have uh, relationship between satisfaction and retention. So higher level of satisfaction might lead to higher level of uh, retention. But uh, that strength of the relationship might be uh, weakened or maybe further strengthened in the presence of a moderator. For example, uh, stress. So if the employees are more stressed, uh, even though they are satisfied, they might not be, a, uh, they might not be uh, able to be retained uh, at you know at that higher level so in other words the relationship is weakened the strength of the relationship is gonna going to be weakened at higher level of stress uh, while the strength of the relationship between satisfaction and retention is gonna be strengthened further at the lower level of stress so employees are less stressed then satisfaction might have a bigger impact on retention if the employees are more stressed then satisfaction is going to have lesser impact on retention and that's the best way to define what exactly a moderator is so let's go ahead and check that one using pls scm here so i'm going to make a couple of changes here so first of all uh, satisfaction uh, is measured using four items reflective items sometimes you only have one uh, global item that kind of measures the satisfaction and obviously you know using single item constructs are discouraged you always want to measure a construct using multiple items but at times you know you have just one item available and uh, if you see the satisfaction construct you you would notice that all these items are highly homogeneous uh, and they are sort of trying to measure the same thing so if you bring the global uh, one global item into satisfaction you are not going to lose as much of an information because this these indicators are highly homogeneous anyways and if you do redundancy analysis uh, between this uh, items and the overall uh, indicator here you'll see that this overall uh, item is highly correlated to other four items so so i just want to demonstrate other uh, concepts here so i'm going to delete this one first i'm going to bring this concept here indicator and i'm going to delete all these four here i'm going to just to make sure this is the overall retention here overall satisfaction uh, item here and retention also we used one one but probably might have more than one item so let's say we have three here so I only used one. So I'm going to add those other two as well, which are sort of measuring the retention. And these are reflective. All of them are reflective, uh, reflectively measured uh, constructs. So we're going to bring in the stress and stress is measured using, uh, I would say, these two items, work related stress and personal stress. So I'm going to bring it here. Okay, I'm going to rename this one as stress. Okay, and this is like a formatively measured item. So we're gonna switch uh, between formative reflective. So it becomes formative here, and the retention here. And we are using this as a moderator to let's say first uh, see the impact of moderator on satisfaction and, and retention. So we're gonna click on moderating effect here. We're gonna click on retention here, and we're gonna see that our moderator is stress here. Okay, and we're gonna make sure our independent variable is satisfaction. Okay, we're gonna use two stage uh, standardized automatic uh, default settings here. 
details for details users or viewers are requested to read from different sources to see what are the what are the differences among this uh, options here but two stage is the most preferred one so we're gonna go with that one okay and i'm gonna rename this one let's say I'm gonna rename this one and say more moderating effect of stress on satisfaction to retention okay so we know what exactly we are talking about here now here um, we have to again go through the validation process because we have added a couple of the constructs here that's going to change uh, other uh, coefficients and parameters in the model uh, although marginally but it's going to change and we need to make sure that we evaluate those uh, structural and measurement model again so for the measurement model of the reflectively major constructs please uh, look at my earlier videos i have uh, described those details there here we're gonna look at specifically the stress which is for a really major construct how to validate this one and then the focus is gonna be on uh, our uh, moderating effect of stress on this relationship so uh, when it comes to a uh, formatively major construct okay let's go here this is the formatively major construct. So we have to basically see, uh, first of all, there should not be high collinearity between the items of the formatively major construct because they are measuring different, uh, each, each item is measuring different aspect of uh, my construct here. Uh, so we have to make sure that they are not very highly collinear there and we want to make sure that, that, sure that uh, the weights uh, here we don't call loadings the weights they are significant at p value less than 0 0.05 or the bootstrap confidence interval does not include zero so that's something we have to worry about so with that in mind uh, first we're gonna do the uh, sort of model evaluation which includes you know structural as well as monitoring uh, effect it's gonna do all in one anyways so we're gonna do here uh, PLS algorithm here. We are going to use path, I mean factor weighing scheme here because we have higher order construct and case wise deletion. Um, we're not going to use any weighing options and data groups here. So, with that, I'm going to say start calculation. So, uh, so we we see the results here we want to obviously uh, get what we call the p values and for that we have to run the bootstrap so i'm going to go ahead and run the bootstrap here so i'm just doing 200 samples but in reality you should be doing like 5000 sub samples uh, that's something you have to keep in mind this is just for the demonstration purpose so so again we're going to use complete bootstrapping bias corrected and accelerated bootstrap two tail test 0 0.05 significance label uh, factor weighing scheme missing values uses case wise deletion i'm going to start calculation here is going to take some time so we are done here so we have the p values as well uh so first thing first we have to do what we call a uh, measurement model validation uh we're not going to do any of the re reflective 
measurement model uh, evaluation because that's been done in my earlier video. The focus is on validating stress, which is measured using formative uh, measures. So first thing we have to, if you look at this one, uh, the, we have to notice the VIF values among those indicators and the weight. So weights are significant. We can see that both the weights are significant here. Uh, we need to make sure that also that you know bootstrap uh, confidence interval does not include zero obviously it won't include zero because these are significant but just to cross check uh, it's always good to look at those as well so let's see the VIFs first so I'll go to PLS algorithm here VIF here outer VIF that's what you need to be looking for and we're not worried about the reflectively measured construct, but we are worried about stress, which is measured formatively. So these are the two items in the stress, both have VIF values less than five, which signifies that they are not highly correlated to each other, or in other words, no multicollinearity issues exist here. So we are good on that front. So we make sure this one is there. We also make sure that the, that the P values are less than 0 0.05 which are uh, significant here and if you are if you want to see the bootstrap results uh, you can go to the bootstrap here and look at uh, hold on so here uh, Click on order weights and uh, we are looking for uh, stress indicator one and stress indicator two. Both are uh, significant at the p values less than 0.005. Confidence interval, we have to go here again, and obviously, that's not going to include zero, otherwise, p value would not have been less than 0 0.05 but just to cross check see this one 95% uh, confidence interval doesn't include zero that means a p value is significant that just for your you know uh, knowledge there so we have validated this model uh, and when it comes to validating the structural model it's very similar what we need to do is you know for the structural model we have to look at the VIF between the constructs the path coefficient uh, significance and the r square so VIF again uh, we can go to the PLS algorithm here and click on VIF here and we are very we are gonna see inter inner VIF uh, for retention that's being predicted by uh, commitment. Uh, I would say uh, not this one because that's moderating uh, in, interacting in, interaction effect. But uh, again, the VIF is low there. Uh, I guess we should uh, look at the VIF here because that's one of the um, you know one of the independent variables now in the form of interaction. Term. So we have satisfaction and stress as well. So all of them are not very highly uh, collinear to each other, uh, which means that we satisfy the multicollinearity issue. No multicollinearity issues exist here. Uh, all of the VIFs are less than uh, five, which is what we want. And uh, if you see here, satisfaction commitment is being predicted by satisfaction. There's only one uh, construct here, right? So if you're predicting commitment using satisfaction, there is only one um, construct here. That's why VIF values one. Why it is one? Because uh, multicollinearity exists only when you, you have more than one independent variable because you're looking at the collinearity between those uh, independent variable. If there is only one, independent variable there is no question of uh, collinearity with other independent variables because there is only one independent variable that's that's something you know uh, to explain why you're seeing one there so uh, so we have seen the VIFs uh, of the structural model there are th that those values are less than five and it satisfies our uh, assumption there and the second one is we should be looking at the p-values. Uh, 
So if you go to the path coefficients, uh, most of them are significant. You can see it here. All the path coefficients are significant. Okay, and if you want to look at the R values, so I'm gonna go here and uh, let's say go here. Okay, so uh, give me the program run here and the R score. So basically, you know, the construct string the R square that means uh, satisfaction explains 33% of the variation in commitment, and commitment and satisfaction together explains 41% of the variation in my uh, dependent variable of retention. So uh, again, R square is used uh, using in sample. Uh, data that means we are calculating the R square based on the same data that we use to construct the model uh, and this is often criticized a lot because here we are pitching this modeling as a predictive modeling in that case we need to make sure that our predictions are going to be accurate and for that it is advised that we we should use auto sample uh, majors not the R square so for that you know those who are interested they can do PLS predict I'm not going to do it here. That's not my focus here. But most of the time, if you are doing this for the research, R square is more than enough uh, to quote in the paper. So that's something you have to keep in mind. So with that one, we now turn our attention to what we call moderating effect. Okay. Now, um, stress has a negative effect, obviously, uh, on the retention. But more interesting is the moderating effect of stress on this relationship, and that's negative which means that at higher level of stress, the strength of the relationship is going to be weakened by uh, 0 0.02. At lower level of stress, the strength of the relationship is going to be further strengthened by uh, 0 0.02. So, uh, so basically, you know how it works. I'm just gonna show you the calculator here. So uh, at, at the normal level of stress, when the stress level is average, the strength of the relationship is, uh, is going to be 0 .0, 0 0.0.217. Uh, that's uh, at average level of stress. But if you increase the level of stress by one standard deviation, the strength is going to go down by 0 0.02. So the new uh, coefficient is gonna be 0 0.217 minus 0 0.0. Two. So that's gonna be the strength of the relationship at higher level of stress and it's clearly lower than this one That means at higher level of stress uh, Satisfied employee may not be able to be retained as much as The employees who are facing less stress. So in case of less stress, which means if the stress value goes down by one standard deviation the strength of the relationship is going to be let's say I'm gonna clear this one point Two one seven, and it's going to be uh, since we are talking about decreasing the the values of uh, stress by one standard deviation. So we have to subtract that. So point two one seven minus minus point zero two two. That's going to be plus here. So it's going to be plus point zero two two, and that's going to be uh, you see the strength of the relationship is going up. Uh, the coefficient value is going up by. Uh, you know, 0 0.022. That means at lower level of stress, the strength uh, the strength of the relationship increases uh, between the satisfaction and the retention. That means if employees are uh, less stressful uh, and if they are satisfied, they're going to be retained more compared to the employees who are more stressful. In that case, even though they are satisfied, the they may not be able to be retained at that higher level. So that's something uh, you have to pitched in another thing uh, which i want to point out here is you know the simple effect the the effect we are talking about is a simple effect which means uh, we are talking about the uh, the effect of satisfaction and retention in the presence of a moderator called stress so we when we talk about the simple effect we talk about uh, the the changes in the relationship the main relationship in the presence of a moderating uh, construct. So, for example, does the relationship changes between satisfaction and retention in the presence of high stress and low stress? So, that's a simple effect. That's not a main effect. So, if your focus is to analyze the main effect, then you should uh, not include the moderator 
at all because now this cannot be categorized as a main effect this is the moderating effect this is obviously right now issuing the uh, simple effect when the when there is no moderating effect so for example when the value of stress is zero the average for the average value of the stress this is what you can expect uh, the value of the the strength of the relationship between satisfaction and retention okay that's something you have to keep in mind okay so with that uh, we have to look into the bootstrapping results here i guess we have already looked into it so moderating effect is significant uh, and uh, and um, yeah so that's pretty much it uh, so by doing that we are doing the simple effect and uh, our interaction effect which is moderating effect is significant at 0 0.05 level and it's a negative uh, impact uh, on the relationship other thing before i let uh, before i commit this one probably we can also see the moderating effect of commitment moderating effect of stress on commitment and retention so for example i can double click this one and say that okay instead of satisfaction as independent variable let's analyze the commitment as an independent variable okay and i can rename this one to here so commitment to retention okay and let's run this one Okay, so we are also gonna run the bootstrapping procedure. So if you're watching this video, you can fast forward until the completion of this process and start watching from there. So you see here, we are sort of seeing the similar effect. Uh, the moderating effect of stress uh, on commitment and retention is also negative, which means that at higher level of stress, the strength of the relationship goes down. At lower level of the stress, the strength of the relationship between commitment and retention goes up. Uh, and again, you know, you have to follow the similar process as, as I sort of explained when we, are, we were using stress as a moderating effect on satisfaction and, and retention. So, uh, so we talked about a formatively major construct here, how to validate the formatively major constructs in PLSLCM. And then we talked about the moderating effect. And when we are doing the moderating effect, we talk about the simple effect. Um, now, in presence of moderator, this becomes a simple effect. That's something you have to keep in mind. And again, if you want to evaluate the mean effect, then you should not include stress of the moderator um, because here the meaning changes in presence of a moderator. So with that, I'm going to stop my video here. Thank you very much for listening.